Hey, it's Mr. Bennett Fay with the walkthrough of 11.3 to 11.7 for, I think, just this first part. Um, and a lot of this will actually be review. We've started to in, like informally do these things in the last part, or um, like in the previous weeks, but five and six are really going to be new. So um, please, uh, before watching this video, go ahead and take a look at some of the sample websites in number two. That will really be worth your time. And then also, I'm going to show you how um, I like to use this exploration piece. It's tempting to skip, but I think it's really valuable to, it says in the next few levels, you'll be changing and adding styles, um, but just look through the web page and discuss parts of the CSS code you think are making the page different. And even though you may not have a partner to do this, um, you can totally go through by yourself. So I'm looking at the web page first off, and I'm like, whoa, that's cool. Um, I'm going to go into my CSS sheet. Um, and what I'm noticing that I haven't seen before is like this, how the pictures are rounded. And also they got the like the brown thing, brown border on it. So that's kind of what I want to explore in my head. Um, so I'm going to look in the image rule set in the CSS. And here's how I kind of um, just uh, indulge my curiosity. So a couple of rules I haven't seen before, I'm just looking through these, um, is border color. So I could like change that if I want. Okay. So for everything, all the images. Border width. Yeah, change that to 10. It changes for sure. Border style. Solid. I wonder what. Yeah. yeah okay. Border radius. See all these things. This all this stuff with borders is new to me. So I'm just going in and changing the values to see like what everything does. So I'm going to change this to ten to one hundred to see what happens because I have no idea what border radius does. And no, oh, that's interesting. So it changes like the border radius, how flat or like how curved the the boxes. What about zero? Uh, makes it square. Interesting. And then float. I haven't seen float before. So it says left. So I'm going to type in right and see what happens. Okay. So just by like going into the code and like when we're learning something new and just um, trying to see like what is going on. Um, by changing some of the values, you can learn a lot. So I'm going to hit finish and go on to number four. And this is about background color. And um, you probably have done this before in the last couple weeks, um, like for lesson 7.5. Um, so the do this says try to make the light blue background another color, and then try to change the background color of just the paragraphs. So there's a lot of files here. Most of them are images in this left side here. Um, but there's, of course, the CSS sheet, and that opens up all our rule sets. So first it says change, find the code that's making the background of the entire page light blue. Okay, so I'm going to look for light blue. There it is. Background color. And then let's look at what tag, what selector that is. It says body. And a little, little hint here. We've, we've been through this briefly before, but body, since everything in the HTML page goes between the two body tags, anything you put into the body selector changes the entire page. So right now the background color is light blue. What's for desserts? Maybe like a light red? Light coral. I like it. Ooh. 
All right, now I'm going to try to change the background of just the paragraph. So background color. Let's try that. And I'm typing into the paragraph tag here. Or back paragraph rule set. Background dash color. Um, maybe change that to light blue. Interesting. Okay, not sure if I like it, <laughs> but we'll go with it. So that's how to do that. I'm gonna hit finish. And of course, like with every walkthrough, I'm going quick um, with the full knowledge that you um, can work the pause button to stop and replay something if you need to. Number five um, is a review of the body element. Like I just said, so I probably shouldn't have spent so much time on that. It says, find the body rule set in the style sheet. Discuss with the partner. You may not be doing this. What you think will be hap will happen if you add text align, color, or other text properties to the body rule set. When I add text align, what will happen when I add text align to this, to the body? I guess that just means all of the text will align left to right. Find out text align center. Did anything happen? Fresh and saved. Nothing happened. What about left? All right, what happens if I change the color? Color. Now, I remember from previous lessons that color means text color. So if I change it to red, well, that change the, changes the text color of all the text in the page. I definitely don't like that. Or other text properties. So I could change the tech, the font size. Anyway, um, main point is that body, the body rule set here, um, any rule you put into here will change um, the appearance of everything in the web page. Okay, going on to six, and this should be no new for everyone. So this says float, um, and up here. You may not use these a lot, but um, they're useful sometimes. So what does a float property do? The float property makes an element float, meaning that the elements that come after it all flow around it. So I think that means like this picture, like this text is floating around it. If the float value is left, the element will float to the left. And if the element and the elements after it will show up on its right. So the do this says, um, look at the float property inside your image rule set. So I'm going into CSS, rule set. I know all these are rule sets. I'm gonna go down to the image one and it says float left right here to discuss what you think the property does. So right now it says float left. I think that basically like the image is like floating on the left hand side of the screen. And if I change it from left to right, it'll like flip. So we'll see. There we go. It's kind of a cool effect with the images. So I'm gonna hit finish, go on to number seven. Width and height. This also might be a review for some of you, but it says find the property in the style sheet that controls the width of the images and change the width of the images to be large, larger or smaller. All right, let's do that. Style sheet, images again. All right, 
So here it says width. So right now it says 300 px. Let's change it to 500. Oh, looks like it just made the image bigger. What about 200? See you. Now it says create a rule set with the height property, height property to control the height of your images. All right, so maybe under width I'll make some room by pressing enter. And now I type height, height, H E I G H T colon. Uh, oh, that's interesting. It says auto height. But what if I do PX, 300 PX? My colon. Oh. It's kind of stretching the images up and down, isn't it? What if I do 10? <laughs> okay, so what I'm thinking automatically is I got to be really careful with the height property because I can really stretch my images. Okay, that looks pretty proper. 200px. Um, so I'm going to get rid of this. Um, and then the last thing to do here is use the width property in the P rule set to change the width of my paragraphs. Ooh, I didn't know you could do this actually. So I'm gonna go to my paragraph rule set down at the very bottom. And after the last rule, I'm gonna create some space by pressing enter and type width, W-I-D-T-H colon, and let's try, I have no idea, 20px. Oh, yikes. Okay. What about 30? No, 40. Better, 100. How about um, 500? Looks normal. Three hundred. Interesting. How about a thousand? Okay. Oops. All right. I think five hundred. Maybe a little long, but it's fine. Hit finish down there, and that is the end of the skill building. Um, I would recommend uh, doing as many of these as you have time for.